Hello. In this video, we will create an object storage bucket in our Oracle Cloud infrastructure and use it to store various data files. The Oracle Cloud infrastructure object storage service can store an unlimited amount of unstructured data of any content type, including analytic data and rich content like images and videos. You can store or retrieve data directly from the internet or from within the cloud platform. The object storage is a regional service and is not tied to any specific compute instance. Here are some useful numbers to remember when considering the size of upload supported. The maximum object size you can store is 10 tibibytes. For multi-part uploads, the maximum object part size that can be uploaded is 50 gigabytes. The maximum number of parts allowed in a multi-part upload is 10,000. And the maximum size an object metadata is 2 kilobytes. So let's create an object storage bucket and upload some files. Here we're looking at our console. To access object storage, we click on the main menu, then storage and buckets. On our list of buckets, we click create bucket. In the dialog, we name our bucket mor-newbucket1. We have the option to keep the default standard tier or change to an archive tier. But once the bucket is created, the tier cannot be changed. You can read more about tiers at the documentation link shown here. Options are available to manage auto tiering for objects that are not used often, enable object versioning, automate monitoring of events related to objects through the event service, and have the system clean up objects that have been uploaded in parts but the upload was not completed. We can automatically encrypt objects using Oracle assigned to 56 bit keys or use our own keys. Objects can also be re-encrypted using the alternate method at a later stage. We will leave the default of Oracle Managed Keys. Scrolling down, we click Create to create the bucket. We now see our new bucket listed. The three dots menu offers options for managing and deleting the bucket. We can create pre-authenticated access to the bucket and its contents, and can move the bucket to a different compartment. We can also change it from a private bucket to have read-only public access. We can delete it and its contents. Let's look at the bucket details. We could take the view bucket details option from the menu, but instead we will click on the bucket name in our object list. We can see the namespace the bucket is associated with and its compartment. The namespace is the top level container for all buckets and objects. Each Oracle Cloud infrastructure tenant is assigned one unique system generated and immutable object namespace, which spans all compartments in a region. This namespace cannot be customized or changed. In the Features section, we see the storage tier chosen and visibility of the bucket and its contents. To change the visibility, we click on the Edit Visibility button. In the dialog, we can change to Public, but we're happy with Private, so I click Cancel to close the dialog. In the Usage section, we see information about the number of objects and bucket size. Large objects can be uploaded as multi-part files, so we will see any parts which have been uploaded to the bucket and are waiting for the rest to be uploaded, and how much space they consume. Clicking on the Move Resource button, the drop-down list allows us to choose a different compartment and move our bucket to it. I click Cancel as we don't need to do this here. Scrolling down, we see the objects in our bucket. We click Upload to upload a file. The dialog allows us to set a prefix, which will allow grouping of objects into folders, and to easily manage multiple objects. We leave this blank for now. We can change the associated tier for the object if we wish, but we will keep the default of standard. We simply drag and drop a single or multiple files into the window to identify objects to be uploaded. Here I drop a single video file. We can customize the use of response headers and metadata using key pair values, but I will not do this now, so we click Upload to begin the upload. The file upload shows finished, so we click Close to close the dialog. Now we see our object file listed in our bucket. Clicking on the three dots menu for the object, we have options to download the file, make a copy of the file in the bucket, and change the storage tier for the object. We can create a pre-authenticated request, which is a pre-formed web link, including authorization, which can be sent to someone so they can access the object from their browser. We can change the encryption method used, rename the object in the bucket, and also delete it. But to see the object details, we click on View Object Details. Listed is the name and URL path to the object. We can download the object here by clicking on the download button. The pop-up shows us the download progress, and when completed, we are presented with the save window to choose a folder and name to save as. I click cancel as I don't want it saved just now. 
and click Cancel on the Details page to close it. Back on our objects list, we will access the download again, but this time we want to create an authorized web link which we can send to someone so they can access the object. Clicking on the three dots menu again, we select Create Pre-Authenticated Request. We can set the request name if we wish, and we are offered target options for the request which will allow access to the whole bucket, single object, or for the objects in a folder in the bucket using a prefix to define the folder name. Access to a bucket or lists of objects with a prefix will require additional IAM policy settings. You can find out more about the policy settings at this link. Access type defines the access permissions as read-only, write-only, or read and write. And clicking on the expiration field, we can set a date and time that the authenticated request will expire. We click Create Pre-Authenticated Request. This is a one-time request and will not be available again if we close the dialog. We can highlight and copy the URL presented or click on the copy button beside the link. I click the copy button and close to close the dialog. We open a new browser window and paste in the URL into the address field. We are granted read access to the file and as it is a video file, it begins to play. Closing the browser window, we return to our object list. To manage the objects in our bucket, we can create folders or use prefixes when uploading to create folder structures and upload to the specific folders. We click on More Actions and select Create New Folder. In the Name field, we enter the folder name, HTML Files, and click Create. We now see our new folder in the object list. Clicking the name of the folder, we see a list of any objects in this folder. We click Upload to upload to this selected folder. The Upload Objects dialog now presents the HTML files prefix in the Location field. The Object Name Prefix field allows us to set further prefixes to define subfolders if we wish. I drop two HTML text files into the Drop Files window and click Upload. With the upload finished, we click Close. We see the two files listed in the folder list. Clicking on the three dots menu for the index.txt file, we select View Object Details. We see the file information again, but because this is a text file, the Object Contents section also displays the contents of the file. I click Cancel to close the Details window. Clicking the back arrow in the list returns us to the top level of the object list. We click Upload again to upload another two files. We will upload the files to a new folder, so we put image files forward slash in the object name prefix field. I drag two image files to the drop file window and click upload. With the upload complete, we click close. Back on the object list, we now see the image files folder created by using it as a prefix in the upload window. Expanding the folder in the list shows the two image files uploaded. And expanding the HTML files folder shows the files in that folder also. To delete a file object from the list, we click on the three dots menu beside the object and select Delete. In the confirmation pop-up window, we click Delete. Clicking to expand the folder, we see the file has been deleted. To delete a folder and its contents, we click on the three dots menu beside the folder and select Delete Folder. In the dialog, we must type in the name of the folder to confirm we want to delete it. We are given a warning, all files in the folder will also be deleted. We click Delete. Back in our object list, the folder and its contents have been removed. Oracle provides an extensive number of resources which you can use to learn more about this subject than others. Use the links here to find more content about this video, as well as Oracle Linux and using Linux and Oracle Cloud infrastructure. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.